You might remember that I had said early on when talking about the Activision Blizzard merger that Sony might eventually regret doing this, partially because it's going to bring a lot more attention to them and their own practices. Well, it does sound like the first indications of that starting to happen are happening right now. The CMA has basically said, you know, this is inaccurate, your math is wrong. Microsoft would lose money by removing the game from PlayStation. So it kind of eliminates their main argument. And now we're hearing that a senator has talked to the, the Japanese Fair Trade Commission and said, why aren't you looking into Sony who has a 98% market share in your district in gaming? That 98% has received a lot of criticism, but what, what's happening there is that percentage is because the FTC has decided that Microsoft and Sony are the only two players in the market. So when you're presenting that information, it's 98%. And do I agree with that? No, I don't. I, I think the market's a little bit more spread out. Obviously, PlayStation is doing very well in Japan, but it's an interesting story. Let's dive into a little bit more of the details about this and some interesting things right now. So this comes from Politico, and the quote that you can read for free is basically the following. I'm told that Sony controls a monopoly of 98% of the high-end game market, yet Japan's government has allowed Sony to engage in blatant anti-competitive conduct through exclusive deals and payments to game publishers, Cantwell said during a Senate Finance Committee hearing. Cantwell noted that Japan's Fair Trade Commission has failed to investigate these exclusionary conducts before posing a question to Tai. So what do you think we can do to better address these issues and create a level playing field with the Indo-Pacific economic framework on something as important as this issue? Now, I thought that this is arising because Sony has been lobbying and this is just my tinfoil hat theory. Sony has been lobbying in Washington against the Activision Blizzard merger. So people have been paying a lot more attention to the gaming market. And now during this meeting with the Japanese Fair Trade Commission, Sony has been called out for a lot of their business practices. So I, I tweeted the following. I tweeted, Sony has been lobbying in Washington against the Activision deal. Seems like they got some attention, but maybe not the kind that they wanted. I have to imagine that Sony might be somewhat regretting their decision to interfere so much with the Activision Blizzard merger. Microsoft had a 10-year contract. Now, the CMA has removed their concerns about some sort of monopoly happening because if Call of Duty were to become exclusive on Xbox, they would lose a ton of money, basically, is the argument. And even the amount of people that would switch. And if you're a PlayStation fan and you're playing on PlayStation, you're not going to switch consoles just because Call of Duty's only on Xbox, right? And that's not, I mean, Xbox also has said since day one that they will make it exclusive. So paraphrasing what the CMA said, that will continue into the future. So we get this news story about the senator bringing it up. And what, what was the response to it? Ty responded, that is absolutely an area that we are primed to address, according to Politico. This one is new for, for me, but let me take this back. I'm happy to follow up with you and your team on this. So now Sony's getting a little bit of a closer look about the kinds of contracts that they're signing where games are prevented from, third-party games are prevented from coming to Xbox and what they are doing to make sure that games cannot come to Game Pass. And all of this, I think, is because they lobbied so hard against the Activision deal. So now I, and this is all tinfoil hat. I think Microsoft is done. And a lot of people pointed out that Senator Maria Cantwell has received contributions over 30 years. It took 30 years to get to this amount. She received $526,943 from Microsoft Corporation. So is that her main reason for lobbying. I have to imagine that she has friends at Microsoft, right? Who probably told her, Hey, maybe you should look into this. I don't know a lot about how campaign contributions work though. There are big groups of people that get money from different packs and such. And, uh, I've been trying to investigate and understand this, but 
Leon Wynn said, she's told that Sony controls 98% of the gaming market. Where's the source that shows 98%? Because I don't think Sony controls almost the entire industry is the case. Well, the Japan and Sony should have a valid response, right? They didn't, so it can only be presumed it's correct. Since they be quiet, that means they know the truth. Like, okay, I didn't mean to read a negative comment, but I thought Leon brought up a fair criticism that, hey, this senator is bought off by Microsoft. But another person who I'm asking for more context, and I'm sorry for the rambling nature of this, 30-year period, almost all individual contributions from employees that work at a company headquartered in the state she is representing. This is literally nothing. So are the contributions from the corporation or are they from individuals over 30 years who work at the corporation? Microsoft is in Washington. And if they work at that company and give their state representative money, then that has to be disclosed. So over 30 years, it doesn't seem like too much. Going a little bit further down the rabbit hole, though, if you'll bear with me for just a second, Sony also has lobbyists. We know that Sony has been lobbying in Washington. You can read all this. It's all on OpenSecrets.org. It's federal lobbying clients for Sony. Now, Sony, as you know, doesn't have as much capital as Microsoft. They have 13 lobbyists, $2.8 million just in 2022. And that amount has been pretty consistent throughout the year. So they had nine in 2021, $2.6 million, and then uh, $2.3 million. And then in 2022, now Microsoft has a lot more lobbyists on their side. They have 98 and... 10 million, 10.5 million lobbying expenditures in 2022. It's interesting that only one person that I've seen publicly talk about the Xbox deal mentioned it during the Japanese uh, Fair Trade Commission, though. All of that is just context I want you to have, and you can come to your own conclusions about it, right? Because I do feel like Leon brings up a fair point. There have been contributions from Microsoft to this person, perhaps. There is somebody at Microsoft saying, hey, but you should ask this question. And Sony's been doing the same thing. Sony's been talking to people and saying, hey, maybe you should look into this Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard. I don't know enough about politics to give you more information about the lobbying stuff, though, because I think the indication is that this senator was bought off to do what? To literally bring up one question at a, at a hearing and then have it looked into? I mean, if that's what $526,000 over 30 years gets you, okay, <laughs> I guess. I, I do think that's a little bit far-fetched, and I do think it is a, a fair question to look into when you're talking to the Japanese Fair Trade Commission. And I think it came about because of the lobbying that has been happening in Washington. You have the FTC suing Microsoft basically to block the Activision Blizzard merger, which I still, I think that case is going to come to uh, an end when the CMA and the EU sign off. They're going to bring the same concessions to the FTC and then the FTC will be like, look what we made Microsoft do, right? But all of this has caused Sony probably a larger headache than they bargained for. And that's what I have sort of been talking about for a long time. That's just my thoughts on the matter and you know what's been transpiring over the last few days, but I felt like it's important. I, I don't feel like this is like the smoking gun that people are, like that tweet blew up. I, I do think that the lobbying in Washington has put a spotlight on Sony. It's a Japanese company. They're lobbying against an American company that's trying to do a deal and senators are probably going to start looking at it. And especially now that Maria Cantwell has brought it up during the Japanese fair trade meeting. Let's read that quote again really quick. Sony controls a monopoly of 98% of the high-end gaming market, yet Japan's government has allowed Sony to engage in blatant anti-competitive conduct through exclusive deals and payments to game publishers. So yeah, is that Microsoft playing hardball and all of a sudden saying, you know what, we're, we're not playing nice anymore. So let's get you, like we're being sued by the FTC, our government, let's have your government take a look into your practices also. What will come of it at the end of the day, I have to wonder. And this is all just sort of me thinking about, you know, this situation. I wonder if at the end of the day, everybody ends up benefiting. Because if Microsoft's 
being forced to adapt new practices that are beneficial to PlayStation players. And PlayStation is forced to adapt new practices that are beneficial to Xbox players. At the end of the day, that could wind up being a good thing for everybody involved. I don't know though. Anyway, sort of a random thing, just a really interesting story about how things have sort of progressed with the Activision Blizzard deal, right? Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Hit that subscribe. I didn't do the promo in the middle, but if you like my content, hit that subscribe. If you're already subscribed, hit that like, because liking a video, you know, helps it go around YouTube a little bit more. Uh, thank you so much to the members. Members, thank you for supporting. If you don't like all the ads on these videos, become a member because I post the same video with no ads. You can support at whatever level you feel comfortable. Thank you to everybody who decides to do that. Click that join button to do so. If you want to see yesterday's video, it's a longer one, but the first half is just a brief synopsis of what happened. Uh, the CMA basically said, we're not worried about the console deal anymore. So they're not worried about Call of Duty console exclusivity. We th the EU is not worried about it. The deal's been approved. This deal's probably going through at this point. Like I was, uh, I was always pretty sure it was going through from the beginning, but it just seems like the big barrier with the CMA most of that has been addressed now. They just have to figure out cloud gaming concessions and they've already uh, adapted several companies like NVIDIA and uh, what is it? It's like Boosteroid and Ubitis, I think. So like three cloud-based gaming companies into the deal. So anyway, check out that news here. I'm gonna get out of here and I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now, everybody.